please join me in a pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the March 23rd, 2020 Board of Selectmen's meeting. Uh, we will start with uh, public comment. Anybody from the public wishing to comment? Nobody there. We'll go to announcements and community calendar. Rusty, we'll start with you this week. Alrighty. Uh, now just uh, be careful out there. I, the uh, fire department did have a two alarm fire this, this morning, about 10 o'clock down on 2M Street. Due to their excellent work, and uh, uh, there was nobody hurt, nobody injured, and that's really good. I mean, uh, it could have gone sideways real quickly down there. Uh, police department did an excellent job closing down the streets, and uh, just uh, thank the uh, the uh, men and women of the fire department for doing such a good job. Okay, go to Regina. Yeah, nothing. I want to remember that as usual. The fire department and the police department did a great job. Chuck. I'll repeat what they just said. All right. Uh, that was impressive. They kept the uh, they kept it contained to that one building, and the wind was pretty heavy, so I was impressed. Um, I do have an announcement. The Hampton Beach Village District had a a, a meeting last Thursday with um, Richard Renier, who's the moderator, and myself, Maureen Buckley, Bob Ladd, and our council, Sharon Summers, and the village district meeting which is supposed to be this Friday will most likely be canceled and re a, a new date set um, those the rules are we can't cancel the meeting until the day before the meeting so Thursday we'll have another meet we'll have another meeting <laughs> and uh, w and I would say 99 percent that 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 will be canceled and we'll put out a new date uh, at this point we really don't know when we can have that meeting. So. Okay, Mary Louise? Um, for those of you who haven't received them, the census forms are being mailed out. Uh, very easy to do on your computer. And I hope everybody takes a couple of minutes to uh, fill in the proper information so we all get counted. Okay, good. I don't have anything really. I, we will have an update on the uh, corner coronavirus. <laughs> in a few minutes, but I just want to say that most people that I've seen mm -hmm. along the beach are keeping a distance from each other and they're out getting some exercise and staying out in the fresh air, which I think is a positive. So that's good. All right, can we go to the consent agenda, please? You do minutes first. Oops, minutes no. first. I will so move the minutes of March 9, 2020, public and non-public sessions. Second. All in favor? Abstain? Two abstentions? Okay. Uh, consent agenda. I, sorry, I went to vote for the minutes, not abstain. Okay. I it was just delayed. Okay, one, <laughs> one abstention. Consent agenda. You want, you're going to read it or you just want me to? So, well, I'll read. All right. 2020 elderly disabled exemptions, 2020 elderly disabled exemptions new, 2020 veterans credits new, 2020 veterans credits renewals. I'll move the consent All agenda. Second. All in favor? Unanimous? Appointments. We don't have any. Yes, yes. as a matter of fact, we do. Okay, why don't we have an update on the. Gentlemen, welcome. Good evening. Um, so we want to talk about uh, just an update on the coronavirus. I'll let the chief talk about the emergency management end, and then we be happy to talk to you about um, some of the employee and our response in the town hall. So, chief, you want to start with the update? If you didn't uh, watch the governor's uh, press release today, is uh, really the biggest change we've had is the gathering size of 50 has been reduced to 10. Mm. Uh, just about everything else stays in place. He did make a, take a number of actions dealing with prescription meds to make sure that folks that are getting the medications uh, through the mail or from the Commonwealth will still be able to get those uh, just so there's no interruption with those people that need to get the medications. As far as moving forward with the issues we're experiencing down at the beach, I have been in constant contact uh, with uh, Commissioner Stewart from the Parks. Uh, we've been working together on trying to formulate 
plans as this thing, as this issue evolves. Uh, right now, uh, over the weekend, I requested that we be able to shut down the North Shore areas from 6th Street to 9th Street, 19th Street, uh, to any parking after 7 p.m. A lot of folks, as you say, are down there uh, being prudent, being smart, using that distancing, uh, but it seems to be at about that hour we have our group show up uh, that don't follow the rules. And we've had a number of encounters with them, including some arrests for alcohol violations, just really making bad decisions. Um, and it's unfortunate because that puts everybody else at risk from losing that. Uh, we don't want to get to the point where we have to shut things down completely, but if folks continue to disregard uh, these protocols, there's not going to be much of a choice left and people can't just keep their distances and not block the sidewalks like we were experiencing. So we went down there Saturday night with a uh, small group of officers and uh, asked the folks to move along pursuant to the uh, state parks order and we had great success with that. People moved away. As people pulled in, a couple of officers were stationed up there for an hour or two just to keep them away. That order remained. I spoke to the commissioner this morning. That order remains in place. So the parking between 6th Street and 19th Street along the seawall will remain closed after 7 p.m. each evening. Looking forward, these issues really become problematic when we get the, uh, the warmer weather, the sunny weather. Now, it wasn't a great weekend. The sun was out. Uh, it wasn't warm by any description, yeah. but people were starting to feel the effects of being closed in at home or wherever they are, and they're, they're coming down here to try to get that exercise. We just ask that they, they follow the rules. Uh, don't make it so that we have to shut it down for other people. Keep your distance. Don't block the sidewalks. If you're moving, you're down on the sand or you're on the sidewalk, there's no problem. It's when they group up 10 to 20 people and they block the sidewalks and people can't even get around them. That we're not going to tolerate. We will move people along if they continue to do that. And obviously, again, after 7 p.m., that section, which seems to be the, the hub of all this activity, is going to be shut down to parking. You can still walk down there, but you will not be able to park your vehicles in that area. Yeah. Those are really the biggest area of concerns we've had. Uh, certainly, over time, you're going to see a toll being taken on your first responders and your public works just out there still working. Most of the folks I know, I mean, we've been, I know the fire chief and I have been at it for about three weeks in a row, um, just trying to maintain and be out there and be the eyes and see what's going on. Uh, I would add my congratulations. That was an unbelievable job they did this morning. I was coming up to the town office when that call came in. I was on one kind of road, turned around, and by the time I hit Boar's Head, I could see it, and it looked bad. By the time I got there, they had the thing almost knocked down. That was uh, an amazing job that they did today because that could have been another whole block we would have lost. So as part of our normal duties, we're also dealing with the pressures of, of corona. Uh, you know, is people being really upset, not upset, but, you know, worried about every situation they now go into. So I know the fire department, the police department, and public works have all established different protocols uh, to protect our employees because we don't want this to get into our buildings, we don't want this to get into our workforce because that could put us out of commission pretty quick if it happens. So those type of things have taken place in what we refer to as the big three. Uh, there's nobody coming in for visits to the police department. Unfortunately, the officers that come up to visit the fire department going for coffee, those type of things right now aren't going on. We have, we have to try to keep people separated the best we can. Uh, so far, I can see that in each department, those things are, be, are taking place. So just trying to do our part to try to thwart the spread of this. And if you didn't hear, we have had our first confirmed uh, coronavirus death in the state of New Hampshire was Hillsborough County. Mm -hmm. So it's still starting to increase. It still hasn't hit the peak yet. I think we have a little bit more of a rough ride to go before we get over the get over the hump of this. Okay. Before uh, the assistant manager talks, do we want to ask questions to the chief? Regina? I have, I have a question. As far as I watched the press release and then the questions he, that the governor was also on WMUR later on in the afternoon, the cases, they've tested 2,400 and they still have like almost, is it 800 or 900 cases that are still pending? Yes, yeah, so yeah. that's the problem. The labs have been overwhelmed, obviously, as this thing increases. Some cases will go directly to the state lab. But if you're going to your primary care provider or you're, as an individual citizen, you're more than likely going to a private lab. Uh, they're saying three to five days, but I'm seeing it, it's being extended even further than that as this, this issue not only increases here in New Hampshire, but throughout the country. Right. Mm -hmm. 
The numbers you see on the website, I think you're talking about, if you look at the sub on that, it's usually PHL, Public Health Lab. Okay. It's in the parentheses in the bottom as opposed to um, companies. So those are the numbers you're seeing. Rusty? Yeah, just, just one, one of the things I heard down the beach was a couple of our, our businesses down there were open and people were standing in line. Because yesterday there was 50, now it's down to 10. Will that, how, how will that affect you guys now? Well, as far as the enforcement of that, we're going to document if we feel that it's a problem and bring it to the attention um, of the governor's office and they'll determine what sanctions they're going to take. That could change, as you saw in Massachusetts, Governor Baker has now instituted these and he's putting it down to the local level with a kind of a fine schedule type of thing. All of those are possibilities here. We just ask the business owners to be responsible. Many of the businesses I've gone into and Thank you to each of the businesses is trying to stay open and, and utilize the protocols. But if you go to a place like Los Olas, you have to phone your order in first. When you come to the door, they'll meet you at the door with your order and hand it through the door. Mm -hmm. Bring it to the car. To the car. To take okay. the number, number and everything. Yeah. Yeah. So right. even up to uh, KB's Bagels, same thing. You go, you make your order, you step outside, they'll wave to you when the order's ready. They'll hand you the order and you move on. So a lot of places have instituted uh, mm -hmm. things like that that are very helpful. Most of the businesses that I deal with that exact yep. same thing, yep. whether that whether they call first and you know you pay for it with your credit card on, and, and do it and you're all done, they bring it out right. or they go to the door and they will bring it out. Where we're going to have the problem is, is you know, if we get out for this week and out through this weekend weather-wise, I think, you know, we'll see some people over the weekend but not big crowds. As the weather warms up, yep. places that are, uh, you know, designed to be takeout places, they'll start getting the lines down at the beach and we just have to make sure that we mm -hmm coordinate with those business op uh, operators that haven't been open prior to this and make sure what the expectation is because if we do see it we may have to shut them down. If I can jump in on that one thing that, that I have seen circular around on social media and I think it comes out of the chambers is a, a great list of restaurants that are open for takeout and how they do their phone numbers and, and such so I, I'd encourage folks to take a look at that I believe you can find that on the chambers website uh, but it's a great way to touch base with businesses in town who are staying open and need the support. They actually have a website now. They do. They have a website specific for restaurants. If you look at it, it gives you the name of the restaurant, it gives you the phone number, it gives you their website. So you can actually pull it, pull it up on your phone and have it right there. So uh, instead of trying to look at a PDF file, it's now on, on a website itself. Great. That's super stuff. Mary Louise? No. Everybody's Chuck, getting creative. Just a sure. quick thing. Do you, do you find that people were moved from 6th to 19th? Are they moving to the main beach or are they just not? No, I took a ride. I came out Saturday when we did that and I took a ride around to see if we just relocated them to someplace else. Mm -hmm. And no, they actually they went back to wherever they're from. The main beach had some cars down there. Um, it's less of an issue there because you have wider sidewalks and you don't have the issue of disturbing and disrupting the neighborhood. You know, that's been a constant problem up in the North Shore anyhow. But now it's, it seemed to be increasing where it wasn't a skip day. They're, they're out of school, essentially. Yeah. They're on vacation. Yeah. And they're all coming down to the area that they come down to in the summer and just starting their summer vacation early with us. <laughs> and it's, it's at that level in March as opposed to July and August. So, on a 42 degree day yeah. that we were seeing, as opposed to a warm day. That People are bored trying expect. to find something to do, and we, we understand that. Just be wise about it, be smart about it, keep the separation and the distance, and, and things will work out fine. Regina? You guys have already sort of hinted on it again, and we talked about it briefly last time we met, but like you said, it was what, 47 degrees the other day? 42. And we had those yeah. crowds. What When we do get you know, a real warm day, and we do have these same, if we still are to have these same precautions in place, I mean, 50 is a lot different than 10. Yeah. Um, my concern is that, like, I know that if you're watching the meeting, I've tried to get what the rules are out there, but I just want to make sure that people realize that, and, you know, I'm not sure how many, is the 10 effective now? Yes, it was announced today. So I just want to make sure that we can let everyone know because that is quite, I mean, I work in a small business and we we don't ever have more than 10 people in there these days but um that's quite a difference mm -hmm. and if and again, we get I, like another saturday yeah well, that again, could it's be the an issue key there is the 10 congregating together within that six feet right, right. or the smaller confined spaces they want folks spread out 
if we have you know thousands of people that are all walking on the beach and they're extended the social distancing we're not discouraging that that the state is actually encouraging it's good to get out get healthy walk hike right, right but um, with the but restaurants that other, yeah and you yes. know, waiting in the and lines the and stuff. Yes. Yeah, the bathroom. Those are all things that are under discussion now. The states, we're all well aware of it. We're, we're working on that. We've had meetings already, and we'll continue to do that, how best we can respond to that. Okay. The parking, is that a moving target? I mean, it's not set in stone for the whole summer? The seven o'clock? No, we, we're going to uh, work on that week to week again. I'm in daily contact with the commissioner. Uh, letting her know what's going on from our perspective. I mean, they obviously have their staff, but this is early in the season for them, and they've yeah. already had some people that are out. Um, so they have very limited staffing right now. So we're trying to help them out, be, our, uh, be their eyes and ears. Uh, they had to move their variable message board today because of the snow. And I showed them that if we had to get signage up down there, that we, we have signs that we could get down there if we needed to in a pinch to make sure we keep that clear. I think the word has spread pretty quickly that we're going to be moving people along at 7 o'clock and now we, we won't have to go up there with very many officers. We'll go up with one or two each evening, yeah. just put the blue lights on, use the PA system and let people know that it's time to go. And we got complete cooperation both Saturday evening, Sunday evening. I don't think tonight there's much going on down there. Um, weather is our ally right now. Yeah. We're looking good out through the most of the weekend. It's a mix of cold and wet. But when we get to the other side of the next week, at least the long-range forecast Wednesday looks to be a pretty good day, and we'll see where we are from there. But we're going to regroup uh, each week uh, between the parks. We've also been in communication with the Department of Safety and the Division of State Police. Uh, we've got commitments from them that if we start seeing one of those warm days, we will get the personnel that we need to try to manage the crowds. Okay, good. good. Jamie? So we just want to touch base on town operations just to give you an update of where we're at. Last time we talked about, um, you know, authorization to deal with issues as they come up. Um, and overall, things have gone as well as we could expect. Um, you know, the public has been tremendous. We have curtailed the walk-in services, you're well aware, at the town office. Um, so we're lucky we have a very robust online opportunity to do that, and folks are taking advantage of it. Where they can't um, are town clerk and tax collector are doing a really good job of scheduling appointments with people who need service. So we're going to continue doing that and we discussed and have been working on a sort of a combination. We want to reduce the number of people in the building so as to reduce the number of people being exposed to one another. So we're going to be instituting plans to have a lot more remote work be done from home and rotate folks through their offices on various days so that we can still be in there to provide the service yet reduce the contact between folks. And we're, we'll be instituting that likely starting tomorrow sometime um, and begin getting all the IT needs squared away at home. IT's been great working on that. Uh, but again, I would ask folks to you know, be patient, to contact the folks you need service from. They will get back to you. If it needs a schedule, they will. You can take advantage of our online services. We encourage everyone to do so. But we're very pleased and proud of all of our staff, both police, fire, public works, and everybody else in the town office and other folks. They've been great. Um, and this, like everybody else, they, we all have our anxieties and concerns. And we've been holding numerous meetings and communicating with those folks as best we can to try and, try and keep them informed as best we can and deal with issues as they come up. So, I, I, you know, Public Works has done some great adjustment. I was down at the transfer station this weekend. Um, it's running great. You know, they've made some adjustments to be sure that folks aren't, you know, in the bays, multiple cars at a time. They've done a really good job with all of that. So, I'm very, very proud of our, our team doing a good job with this challenge. Any questions, Chuck? Rusty? Yeah, the only thing I, I, I have, comment I have is I think you guys are doing a great job. One of the things I had somebody had asked me, they had called the town office and the phone message was dated. Yep. And just that we make sure that all of our messages that are out there are up to date and, and factual. I mean, uh, this person had called the town clerk's office and, and they were talking about voting in January and, and yep. stuff like that. So, yep, we're working on all that. All those little things that you might not see are being highlighted. Yep. Um, simple things like uh, when you walk into the, the, the office or you walk into the lobby now, you can drop things off, but folks who don't know, we've set up a phone there and there's a list of phone numbers they can call. And just simple things like, hey, this phone went direct to the phone message, so, you know, to go through select one, two, three, four. Hey, if people are standing in the lobby, we don't want them standing there going through the phone message, make sure it goes to one that's a direct ring. So we're finding things like that and we're solving them as they come up. Okay, Gina? 
Yeah, I heard the same thing about the town clerk's message. And also, I wanted to say I was been going on the town of Hampton website, and it is excellent, the information that has been put up there about the COVID-19 and the updates and, you know, the myths, things like that. I think that Christy, I talked, spoke with her today, and I know Paul and uh, Dylan, they've done an excellent job. They have. And they're putting it up on Facebook, too. So if anyone has any questions about anything, I would really urge you to go to that website that, you know, that is taking CDC and all the, the actual factual and looking at that. And it's a lot, it's comforting to read because it, there's no panic to it. You know, you gotta, you gotta remember that Facebook, it, people say what they want on there. You know, it's, it's people are talking about cases in Hampton. Now we can't know if there's cases in Hampton because that goes against HIPAA. So people need to understand that just because someone's saying that someone has been found to have this in Hampton, you can't take that. You know, I know Rockingham County, there's been a lot of cases, but we also have to remember that Rockingham County is heavily populated and they're on the border of Massachusetts and Maine. So people really need to think about things. And if they have questions, go to the town website. You can contact any office by either email or phone. It's all there for you. And if you have any questions, please call. And please, if you don't feel comfortable, I would urge you to call the police station because there's always someone there that can answer your questions or at least tell you where to go. Excellent advice. And we need to remain calm throughout this, and it will pass. We don't know how long this is all going to last for, and we just need to work together. We're all a team, and we're all on the same side. Everyone's sitting in this room. Very good. So we have to be strong. I agree completely. I would also add there's some other things you'll be seeing and have already seen that um, we think is great. Um, one of our folks in the, the rec department is sort of where we're cutting out so many programs because of the distancing. They've mm -hmm. taken a really good um, change for us and doing a couple of things. One is they're going to be our point place to, they're starting to collect information from anybody, A, who wants to volunteer to help others or that needs assistance. Mm -hmm. You know, if we have some folks that are afraid to go to the store because they're afraid they, they have an autoimmune issue, they're concerned. So we're starting to build those lists of folks who are willing to help and that need help. And as time goes on, we think that'll grow. And in addition, our new full-time employee, Beth DePel, is, is excellent at social media. So she's taken over much of our messaging. And you'll see what's been circulated, just a simple question and answer that was done with uh, Finance Director Christy Pulliam yeah, and she yeah. about yeah. all things. They did a great job with that. And you're going to see more like that. We're going to try and do more with each of our big three departments, questions, answers, what's going on in those departments, so that we can push those out social media and 22 and our website so folks' questions can be answered. And I think that's great, great stuff. Mary Louise? We're probably lucky that this happened when it did in the winter and off season. It's a good thing it didn't hit everybody in the middle of the summer. Mm. So we have a little bit of time to prepare. That remains to be seen. Right. So we, we really can't get it definitive. We, there isn't a, anybody that can tell you that by this date it's going to be over. Oh, I know. Um, so we just do have to be prepared that in the short term, take care of the business we have to take care of, but be prepared, be prepared for the long-term effects in the community. Yeah. And the final thing I'll touch on is, is again, Chief has been in touch with um, uh, Hannaford, you know, the, the grocery store in town, um, working with them to see what their needs are. and. You know, consistent with the messaging we've all seen, try to assure folks, please don't hoard things. Take what you need for the week, buy that. But if we're to Regina's point, we're all going to get through this together. The we can help one another. And if we take what we need, we will all work through it. Uh, but if we start doing the me and hoarding things, uh, that creates downstream issues. So um, they assure us that while their supply chains are stressed, they are absolutely having the right uh, stuff. They're restocking. Those folks are working, as we've all seen when you go there. They're stocking constantly. They're doing a wonderful job. Uh, please, don't hoard. Take what you need and allow that supply chain to restock, and we'll all be in a better place. Rusty? Yeah, just while, while we're on this whole subject, check on your neighbors. Exactly. Check on those people that, that are around you that it may be older. Uh, one of the things we did, we went to the to the uh, nursing home, visited with my mother-in-law the other day, talking through the window on the phone. You know, stuff like that. Don't don't leave that stuff out. Don't leave those people out because they're in there by themselves. Yep. And, uh, and please do it by phone. Yep, that's what I did. I did, it by, did it by the phone. She was inside on the phone. We were outside. 
Call your neighbors on the phone. Just check up on them. You know, it's it's, it's the old school stuff. You exactly. know, just just check on check on your neighbors. Yeah, good. A couple of things. Uh, number one, that that uh, public service announcement by Christie and Beth was excellent. They did a super job, and it, it you know just last week is when we increased the hours for the Channel 22 guy, which is, seems very appropriate right now because he's able to do a lot of this and get it done. So that's really good. Yes. One other question that's just that when we're putting people together for volunteers and stuff, are we worried at all that we'll put somebody? So we're, we're thinking through all of those okay. issues, and we will have solutions to that. There's creative solutions in this town and all over going on. Um, one, for example, I thought was absolutely brilliant is that when the schools were closed down, there's so many folks that need, you know, young people that need meals. Well, how are you going to connect them with that? Well, the schools put together a program with the bus drivers. It keeps the bus drivers employed. Keeps them, they know the routes. They have these big yellow things that you can load meals into and drive them around as delivery. It's, from what we understand, working out spectacularly. It's those types of creative solutions, I think, that'll be the key to us helping one another. Super. Anybody, uh, anything else? Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank Keep you. up the good work. Um, do we want to do Jen now? Sure. Let's public works. Jen, do you want to? I'm sure you have a simple problem. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's exactly what it is. Compared to this, it is simple. <laughs> Mainly, um, maybe just a brief update because uh, we're here and we're talking about it. But uh, public works is also cl uh, close to the public, as you know. Um, but like Regina said, the website uh, is fully stocked. If you go to the Public Works page on the website, you can get all our applications. You can print them. Uh, you can mail them in. We have a drop box outside our office uh, that you, it's secure, so you can attach your checks to them for your permit fees. We are processing. We are all still working. Uh, believe it or not, the guys are out there now doing a salt run because Mother Nature has thrown in uh, some other stuff. All plows are mounted in case uh, we need to plow tonight but uh, we we are working as you all know the wastewater treatment plant runs 365 days a year 24 hours a day uh, we don't have another alternative so uh, we have contingency plans in place we have um, public works assistant uh, assistance through um, surrounding towns we have vendors on call we have contractors on call uh, so we, we have taken this very seriously and, and have a plan in place. Uh, the transfer station at this time does remain open, uh, 8 to 3, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Thursdays 12 to 3, Tuesdays we are closed. Uh, we do ask for your patience where we're only letting two people in uh, to the garage bay at once to keep that distance. The lines are going to be longer. We ask if you're unloading leaves or brush that you give the person next to you space. Um, this is all about being smart and being courteous and making sure that uh, we're all doing the right thing. So that's a little bit of the public works update. Um, but what I'm actually here for today, unfortunately, is um, also not great news. Uh, I think in your packets you had uh, two memos from me related to the Lafayette Road project. Mm -hmm. uh, this project went out to bid uh, with the hopes that we'd be under contract by March 31st of this year. Um, it does not look like that is going to happen. Uh, the bids came in at 1.991650, so almost $2 million. Mm -hmm. Even after talking it through with Fred and talking it through with Mr. Jacobs and looking at what our options were, um, it's as fluid as what's going on now. Uh, originally, we talked, well, what can we do? Can we uh, reduce some scope? Can we look at doing day work? Can we look at doing combo of day work and night work? Uh, but the reality is, uh, with the businesses being out now, to come in and not know that certainty of when they start back up and for us to start a project again uh, could be extremely detrimental. So the options we see and why I'm here tonight, uh, my memos are before you. We can look uh, at milling and paving it. We do have money to uh, get it buttoned back up. Um, the piece of this puzzle that needs to be known is that the warrant article, warrant article expires March 31st in 10 days. So not having anybody under contract 
makes it almost impossible to do the whole project which is why I'm sitting here saying we do have an option to mill and pave it because we do have a contract with Brox. Uh, we can add it to their contract, uh, get it under contract in time. And this way at least it will be, the structures will be raised, not what you have there now. It would be the smooth surface. We would take it from the intersection all the way to Park Ave where the state did their paving um, and button it up until such time. Uh, a lot of moving pieces and a lot of parts really here for discussion. I, I wanted to sort of give that to you and maybe field questions, talk through things, let you know where we're at. Virginia, do you have any? Well, the Warren article is going to expire in 10 days. Correct. So, I mean, logically, it seems that we would button it up and if we want to have another Warren article, we would have to have another Warren article to next year because there's no way that right we can I because I could not get it under contract right. there's no way to do the reduced scope and get it all rebid uh, by the time it expires so this would literally just smooth it out for right now yep we would pave it and it would be you know normal crown drainage would be improved any of the broken part uh, pavement gets picked up it would all be restriped you know we would still put the crosswalks in where they are now um, it wouldn't have the all the improvements that go with it, but it would certainly be uh, smoother and cleaner than it is today and than it was. And then hopefully, if this is all better, you know, in a how it, I don't know what to say for a date, but it, sometime and that's part over of the this. summer, then we the can look, businesses can operate as usual. And I think that that's the important part and, and why I wanted to talk about it. Um, Fred, correct me if I'm wrong, which is very possible. But this Warren article was money um, that was withdrawn from the Capital Road Improvement Fund. So this is not money that has been spent. It's money that would remain in the Capital uh, Improvement Fund. It was not um, raised and appropriated separately. Am I, am I clear? It was raised and appropriated for the Capital Improvement Fund when the money was being put in. But the article itself hasn't withdrawn any funds that haven't been expended. We have not withdrawn any funds. We only withdraw funds from that account as they are expended, as Correct. the work is done. So that money would remain there. It would remain there. Okay. I just think that's important for everybody to understand. Okay. Questions, Rusty? How's the drainage just under there? I know we, we fixed the sewer, we fixed water is done there. How is the drainage just under there? I'd be remiss to say that it's great because otherwise we wouldn't be replacing exactly. it. Exactly. Um, no. The drainage needs improvement. Um, it needs updating in the sense that there's a lot of connections that are old and from the 20s and 30s um, where lines were switched over and used for different reasons. We've gone plans, I think, all the way back to 1922 uh, for the drainage. It's been added on to as Lafayette Road has been developed. We don't have a severe flooding issue. If you recall, when we when I first came here in 15 or whenever it was, we did the first night project, and that was a FEMA <laughs> grant where right. we increased capacity and worked on the flooding issue. Yep. This is an age and integrity issue, um, not flooding. So it, it sits. That's what I was getting at. Yeah. It's so okay. it, it's it's not good, but it's not failing. I do not foresee shy of whatever else mother nature would like to throw at us at this point that we would have flooding issues because of this okay. Okay. in I, this area it, we're talking lafayette road you know we all want to see the sidewalks get done and we want to see we that do. it's not that that won't do but you know with everything that's going on you know the, this town's going to take a hit over the next year or so mm -hmm. with, with businesses being closed I, I i think it makes good sense to to mill it, bring the structures up to the height, patch it, let our businesses try to recoup and recover, and then come back at it next year or something like that. Yeah. Sort of like we did on Exeter Road, a little yes. bit. Yes. Chuck? Uh, did you say what the cost was? Um, the cost, uh, it, unfortunately, I was working on that today, and uh, the engineers were also working on it, and I didn't get quite the number. Um, but from my recollection of when we did uh, Exeter Road and using my current dollars, 
under our bid, we're probably in the upwards of $300,000, somewhere in between there. And, and I do ask that I'm not quoted on that. I will have a number to this board, uh, as well as Fred, um, so that we can get it under contract uh, before the end of the line. Um, I just was unable to get that from today. Mary Louise? I trust your judgment. You know more about roads than I do. So <laughs> Thank I you, Mary Louise. <laughs> Jen, did you do already go? Yeah, you go. I, I do have one more thing. But you um, I just want to make sure that people realize the, why this is happening. It's not that, that you guys dropped the ball. It's that... So th the reason it's happening is that when the Warren article was passed, it had a deadline and extension on it. When we went through the first year, keep in mind, we start it, we stop it, we start it, because we've been very cognizant of the disruption that it does downtown. Yeah. Last spring, when we were putting it all together for design uh, of all these improvements, we did utility coordination, we've been behind the scenes, and we did take a break. We were repairing a force main, we were replacing a force main. Uh, the department as a whole was doing lots of things all at the same time, and when the design plans came in and we got it out to bid, it is now. Um, we did not think this was coming in. Five hundred thousand dollars over. Uh, it stems from the night work. It stems from uh, sidewalk work and curb work. Um, our estimates had us right where our dollars that were we were able to fund. We only got one bid, um, and as you know, and I, I didn't read it for the public to hear, but uh, the bid was by Linsky Excavating Company uh, out of Danvers, Mass. Um, so as it was, we went through that bid. Some of the items didn't even appear balanced. In other words, they they charge a little bit more for one product when it should have been equally across the board for the other ones. So no, it, this is not a ball dropping thing. This is a series of events, and um, the department as a whole is is not happy that we can't do it. That this was a great project. It is a great project, just between timing and events. And now this event, and knowing that if we try to to push something through, or even I've been before this board, can we please get the funding from somewhere else? I'll give up this, I'll give up that. I'm, I'm not recommending that, because with the businesses already struggling to, to rush through and try to get this done, yeah. um, it doesn't make sense. Regina. Yeah, no, I think that you definitely worked very hard on this project. I mean, if anyone went, attended one or two of those meetings that you put on, they will definitely see that. And I think that, like Rusty said, we're going to be uh, taking a pretty hard hit business-wise business and also everything operationally pretty much everywhere. So I think if we can at least smooth the road out a little bit and we have the money to do that. We do. Like we, can, we can use um, our roadway funding. We can use part of the Warren article because it was for paving uh, in it. Uh, we'll, I'll go over the fine details with Fred. We'll write it up like I said. I was just going to double check to see if the engineer and that had gotten the contract back. Well, we have to, because that expires on March 31st, so do we have to meet again for her? Or is she? No, we're going to issue, we already have a contract for paving. Oh, okay. She's just asking to add this to that contract. And okay. we have the money to do it, yeah, which is a, about four hundred thousand dollars, between three and four hundred thousand dollars. That will uh, finish up all the work as far as paving is concerned. And I'll remind the board that there is an ordinance that we have a five-year hiatus when the road has been repaved. So they'll have to work on this in conjunction with the other programs they're currently working on. And at the end of that five years, this will probably come back and, and do the drainage at that point in time. And, and hopefully, it won't interfere with the, the businesses. Right. So um, I did just get the email. So the one thing we also looked at, just so everybody understands, that if we do try to do the paving at night work, again, to be courteous, there will be an inflator on it, meaning it will probably cost us in the upwards of eighty to $90,000 more to do it at night than at day. And I can come back and we can have this discussion, you know, in two weeks from now. Is that maybe one of the reasons why we only got one bidder? It is. Okay. It is. We, we got a lot of feedback. Um, the first two rounds, I mean, we had we were fortunate to have Jamco uh, be able to do it for um, when we did the drainage, Jamco was able to do it when we did the sewer work. Uh, they were the successful bidder for Aquarian for their water work. Even they, I mean, they did not submit a bid, they couldn't do it again as night work. Okay. Um, Rusty. 
Pierre, um, how long would it, if we're just going to grade it and repave it, how long would we actually have to shut that road down for? So when we did High Street, we were able to mill it one night and then come back in and pave it. I mean, an all night, an eight hour day intersection. You figure this is three to four times. I mean, it could be, if we were to say a, a, a week, a working week type of thing, we have to raise the structures. They'd need to all get painted. They'd come in, they'd do machine work first, and then they'd come back and do the hand work. So, so it wouldn't be shutting the road down completely, no, we, even during the day, if you were working in it? No, we, we would try, and I've already reached out to DOT uh, to do advance board signage and messaging uh, to be able to place it in uh, Portsmouth and then also in Seabrook that if we were to ever do anything during the day, we'd try to keep one lane open and then work detours the other way around if we go day work. And there was something else I, I, I lost it, so. Okay. All right. Thank you. Get anything else? Uh, I do think I need a motion to um, reject the bid. You do. I'll make um, a motion to I'll reject second. the bid. All right, made by Mary Regina, second by Mary Louise. All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous? And Thank you very much. That is all I have. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Was this an awful Yeah. Town manager's report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, <clears throat> it's been a week. I got to tell you, it's been a week. Uh, <laughs> things like this don't, we don't expect to have happen, but we've had an interesting week all together. We've been working on a number of different proposals, as the deputy town manager has told you. Uh, we're very active at getting things done. Um, Town meeting took a lot of actions this year. Right. Um, on uh, June 9th, 2020, the, uh, the town will take over operations of the cemetery under the town manager's office and the selection of supervision. And we're already working on uh, redoing the regulations so they'll be lawful under the selectman in the town. Good. <clears throat> I would like to offer to the board uh, the following. Uh, we, we have a need to, to make sure that we have the ability to borrow for tax anticipation notes. I will be uh, talking to the office of both our United States Senators tomorrow uh, because currently the town is only authorized by federal law to bond or, or take a tax, tax anticipation, uh, anticipation notes up to $4 million. We all know what the economic situation is currently in the United States yeah. and in New Hampshire, yeah. and cash is, is not readily available. It's not fluid like it was last year. Uh, as a result, anything over $4 million that we're forced to borrow, we have to pay federal income taxes on, ah. which is not exactly a small amount of money. So I'm going to ask our United States Senators to throw in the mix of the legislation they're considering in Washington an exemption during this emergency period so the town doesn't have to pay taxes on tax anticipation notes. Excellent. Uh, but in that light, I would also like to offer the following to you in the form of a motion to authorize the town treasurer to make application to the bank to begin the process of obtaining a tax anticipation note for 2020 for the approval of the board of selectmen and the treasurer in accordance with town meeting vote under Article 16 of March 12, 1994, under RSA 33 7. The board needs to vote that in order for the treasurer to legally apply to the bank to do this. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Thank you, Opposed? Fred. You're right Unanimous. on top of it. Thank you. I also forwarded the board uh, prior to this meeting last week uh, an encroachment agreement from the Department of Transportation. As you remember, our very large Welcome to Hampton sign at the corner of Route 150 at the Northampton Town Line came crashing down with a motor vehicle accident. And we have been anxiously working with the state to get a permit to put it back up. We have it. I sent you a copy of the permit. There are a few exclusions. Uh, they have to approve all the attachments that are put on the sign. That is a, the individual signs. It won't be a problem. We only allow organizations in town to put their signs up there. Uh, and there, there can be no political advertising whatsoever put on the board or the permit to have it there is revoked. Uh, we don't allow that anyhow. So uh, with the boards, unless the board has an objection, I'm going to sign this permit so we can get the sign back up so people coming to Hampton will know they're in Hampton. 
Good. It would be nice to get that up. It would also be nice to get the one up that used to be on Exeter Road, too. I approached them on that, and we're working on that, too. So hopefully we'll be able to get that one done as well. Okay. Uh, we have a, do we need a motion on that or just a... a I know. I just, just inform you because okay. we have to... It's, it's our property. We're just getting permission yep. to put it back. That's all. Okay. Uh, and the design that they had approved is the exact design for the original original sign. So oh, it should good. look the same as it was before. Uh, I also sent to the board a, a uh, proposed crossing agreement with the Department of Transportation for the Hampton Branch Railway Corridor. Uh, as you know, we have uh, lines that run down there for the sewer department. Uh, and I don't know if the board had a question on the, on the, on the agreement. Uh, it's gone to town council for approval, but considering town council will probably approve this. Uh, if not, you may have objections uh, to certain provisions that are in it. We get that back to the board to, for your review and potential approval. But I want you to know it's out there, and we are actively working on it at this point in time. Okay. Anything else? Oh, yeah. No, we're not oh. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was that simple this week because it really isn't. Um, I have given you a copy of His Excellency uh, Governor Christopher Sununu's uh, orders. Orders number 11, 12, and 13, uh, executive orders dealing with the current uh, C-19 crisis that we have in the state. And just so you can get an idea of where everything is, in case you have to go, want to go to Massachusetts, I gave you a copy of uh, the Governor, His Excellency, uh, Mr. Baker's um, emergency proclamation for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, too, so you'd, you'd know what was going on. We have been reviewing um, with some trepidation. Uh, the current uh, ward article budget that was passed at town meeting. And I've determined that we need to stage these proposals that were made. And I have a number uh, that involve other funds that don't need to be raised from taxes uh, in order to get work done. Uh, the Winnicott and High uh, plans for reconstruction of those streets which comes from the Capital Reserve Fund, that's $435,000. Uh, these are all funds that do not have to be basically raised from taxes. The solid waste uh, money for uh, the new contract of $425,127. The road paving for $486,231, which is part appropriation and part state funds. The human service agencies, which is an appropriation sum of $183,039. The emergency communications of $116,300, which we already uh, have promised to us by the state of New Hampshire, and is, the check is on the way. The Recreation Department special account, uh, we're going to spend $126,700. The police forfeiture for $90,000 comes from a special account in that agency. The cemetery work for $50,000 again comes from a special account that's already reserved. And uh, in addition to those, we have two. Uh, appropriation articles that were done by petition, one for the cemetery markets for $6,500 and one for the petition to step up parents for $500. Those are all items that are going to be processed as we go along in the next month or so uh, to start them out the door. There are a number of projects, however, uh, that we sort of have a potential hold on. Uh, the first one we will be working on is Lock Road for $850,000. Yeah. That's an appropriation sum, um, and it's a, it's a very important project for us so that we that ties into all of our future work for the next five or six years. Uh, the DPW equipment, uh, we're going to hold on everything but the loader, which needs to, extensive repairs and a lot of money to repair it. So we, we really don't want to spend that money out there repairing that loader if we can get a new one. Uh, and we're told we can. The flood control design for $200,000 will be advanced further in the year. Uh, the high and mill intersection uh, improvements for $195,000 likewise. The DPW officers, $85,000. Uh, FEMA, $50,000. Transfer station, $50,000. Town hall heating system for $32,000, which we won't need till next winter. And uh, building uh, pickup for the building department at $24,500. The conservation fund we wouldn't normally put in the account until end of the year anyhow. That's $20,000. We're going to be working through those. We're not going to be rushing through those. Um, the plan here is to 
have flexibility so that depending on what happens with intake tax money, that we are not going to put a huge tax bill out to these people and we will have money in the um, reserve fund so that we can ask that the board to appropriate that to bring taxes down in accordance with the current economic crisis, mm. if that need be. Don't think it's going to, but if it need be. We also have, um, as you know, we have uh, we had the fire at M Street. You've received a report tonight that I gave you from the fire department, so you have the information that was provided by the fire chief. That was that's important as well. Um, I do have. I'm not sure if it's in that pile or not, or whether it's in my pile. Uh, did you see the M two two thirty two? I did see that. Yeah. You did see that. Okay. The M-232, which is the report of appropriations officially voted by the town meeting, is required to be filed with the state of New Hampshire, and that is in your in information this evening to be signed. Um, we have had a ton of emails, and uh, I know some of the board members have questions, and I'm just going to let them uh, have, a, have a way at those uh, individual questions. We also have had uh, information with regards to, and I, I think the deputy manager uh, gave you the information tonight on the items that we're doing in the town office, which I think is important. We are trying to keep people separated so there's, we can go back online full time immediately when this crisis is over and hopefully that will be so. That's it, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Do you have any predictions, Fred? I hope it's tomorrow, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not that optimistic. Rusty, questions? Yeah, Fred, uh, I think you're doing an excellent job. Uh, you guys doing that, trying to forecast is, a, I guess, a good way to say it about, you know, what's coming up for our taxes and stuff like that. We want to make sure we keep it as low as possible. You know, we, we, we're a little bit criticized before town meeting about having the undesignated fund balance. And... Uh, Right now, that's looking pretty good for this town. Yeah, real good. Well, lucky we do. Well, it's looking real good. And this town's also fortunate we have our, our uh, real estate and trust funds. Yes. And uh, although I don't ever want to see us have to use that, it's nice to know that this town does have that backing there, and that helps us when we go for bond ratings and stuff like it that. Does. And so uh, when people are out there, you know, they're, they're talking about the undesignated fund balance, and it shouldn't be that. I'm so glad we got that right now. And I'm so glad as we're looking forward we have that. So I want to thank you for uh, going through and, and trying to space out some of that stuff so that we do keep it for our taxpayers. But taxpayers need to know that, you know, we've tried to be prudent all along. And uh, this is, is this going to come to show this year. That is our objective, and we've been trying to do that right along, is to try to preserve in case we have a problem or having a problem. We just don't want the taxpayers to suffer because of it. Thank you. Chuck? A question about our trust fund. Yes. Is there a way we can borrow from ourselves? Yes, there is. And you know, why are we going out paying for all these the bonds and for all yeah. the different things? Um, I know when 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 uh, I got a loan for the village district to buy the, the parking lot. Right. Uh, it was much cheaper to go with a, a regular bank yep. and get the funds than going through the bond process and the timing. So I think with, I don't know if we can use it as collateral or if we can just borrow from ourselves. I think it would make a lot more sense, save us a lot of money to use the money we have. I'm not saying I'm, I'm, to, to reduce it, that I'm saying to pay ourselves back. In a, in a way we can, however, it, it doesn't pay us to do that simply because the statute says if we borrow the money from there, we must repay it with the same interest they're receiving now. And they're receiving a much higher rate of interest than we can borrow commercially. The, we, we, we the borrow cost, commercially at two percent. Right. The and cost of the bar of the, the lawyers and all the bond issues, you have to look at that. And well, then if you're paying it back, the money that they make goes up to reducing taxes to the the, the taxpayers in Hampton. So we're we're paying ourselves to reduce the taxes anyways. We, we, we forecasted this before because we had the same question on some of the things that we've done before, and it actually cost us substantially more to borrow from that fund because of the way the, the state has the statute written, written in accordance with the voter time meeting. It, yeah. was, it was devised so that we, if we borrowed from it, they would make additional funds coming back in, which the taxpayers would have to appropriate. 
because we looked into that a couple of years ago pretty pretty in intensively yes I remember. yes and and it was it but, wouldn't help but because we have that money in there we get a better rate of our oh, bond yeah. Yeah, our bond rating is AAB, which is the second best rating in the state of New Hampshire. Yeah. And you, it's pretty hard to fight that. There's only one town ahead of us, and that, that's um, Bedford. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, they have AAA, A, two smalls, two small A's. We're a B. Uh, you, we're just one of the best municipalities in the state because that fund is there. We've got $22 million in that fund. And our liquidity is, is tremendous, so we get a good a good rating, and people are just anxious to, to loan to us. And we usually get we usually get a discounted rate compared to what other towns do. Uh, okay, but it's a good question. It really is a good question. We are now seeing the expertise. It was brought to this community when Mr. Welch was hired in March 2007. Our economy, our uh, handling of money has been tremendously improved by what Fred has done over all these years. The undesignated fund balance all of his management skills and I think we owe you a great deal Fred or more than a round of applause for your focus on the fiscal well-being of this community and I commend you goes the job Regina yeah just uh, to add on about the undesignated fund balance what Rusty said and also we took a couple hits with uh, the yellow sheet on that. And not only do we still have a healthy undesignated fund balance, but we've also, those first set of projects that you've mentioned, a lot of those are coming from our undesignated fund balance, which is taxpayer money. We, everyone realizes that everything is taxpayer money. But what it is, it's taxpayer money that hasn't been used yet. So by using that money to complete some of these projects, like Wanna Cun It, whatever else we had on there, we're using taxpayer money, in my view, in a, in a beneficial way that's going to support everyone in the town that is paying taxes. And with your plan, if we, if we adhere to that, and if we do need to financially help our taxpayers when it's time to set the tax rate, we also have the ability to do that. Exactly. And um, this town is in excellent financial shape, and Mr. Welch, you are a true fiscal conservative in the state of New Hampshire, and it is very good to see. If I had my way, there wouldn't be a tax rate. So. <laughs> right. But I do have one question. We did get from Waste Management, we got a yes. notice that this, we, they are going to be increasing our rates. They are. It's part of the contractual obligation that's been there for five years. Okay. Uh, you will, and I know you're all anxious to hear this, but you will probably your next meeting, which is two weeks from now, uh, begin the process of looking at what we're going to have for contracts for solid waste for the next three and a half years. Okay. So we're working diligently on that. Our, your consultant that you authorized us to hire is working diligently on it as well. And I think we're going to have some pretty good propositions for you to look at. That's great. Okay. Well, Ms. Oh, Mary Louise. I, I just have one point of clarification on the undesignated fund balance. Taxpayers have already paid for that money in their taxes, right. and you have set it aside. But it's not like uh, nobody's getting taxed for that. The taxation has already occurred, right. and then you have taken the taxed money and set it aside and done an excellent job of it. Okay, old business, anybody? Um, I have old business. Go ahead. Let me scribble my name one more time. I hope we don't have any. <laughs> ah. You'll have another pile. Oh, good grief. I'm donating. Mr. Rage is <laughs> awfully nice. He's grabbing these up. <laughs> Can we go in the 
one one uh, point of uh, I have a couple of points uh, problems here uh, especially since we don't know how long these conditions are going to last I would like us to see or uh, to communicate with Parks and Rec in Concord and explain to them I hope that we will no longer pick up their waste on the beach. I am concerned about our public works employees. I'm concerned about our vehicles being all worn out. The uh, Parks and Rec receives compensation from its parks, uh, and we are the only park in New Hampshire where the park uh, does not put aside uh, containers and have private individuals pick up their waste. This is this has got to end. This has got to stop. We have got to stop wearing out our vehicles. We need to stop wearing out our public works employees. If the public work, if the division of parks and recreation won't clean up its own waste or hire somebody to do it. I will strongly suggest that we refuse to do that as a community. We have done it long enough, and I am tired of Concord dumping this stuff off on us. Second, March 21st, I sent an email to Chairman Waddell um, asking him if he could set aside about 10 minutes for me under non-public because I had a few comments I wanted to make. And he uh, kindly emailed me right back. And he said he wasn't planning on any non-public uh, sections tonight and that we should uh, discuss more things uh, in public and we need to be more transparent. And I absolutely agree with that because the public is concerned about the manager and the deputy manager. Okay, do you want to hold up jobs. a minute, please? Yes. Hold up a minute. I'm going to uh, I'm going to rule you out of order. No. Wait. Excuse me. No. Excuse me. Just excuse no. me for a minute. We're not going to get into a shouting match as we've done before. I'm going to rule you out of order. You may challenge that rule if you like. If you have a second. That rule will then be voted on by the board because we, we operate as a majority here on the board. It will be voted on by the board. If the board accepts your challenge, then you can go on. If not, then you're out of order. So I'm ruling you out of order on this, and you need a second to have that. If you want to challenge me, you can do that. I will challenge you, and I will say that this is okay, wait a minute. You've challenged. It's, un it's undebatable. It's, it's not a debatable. It's not a debate. We need to be more transparent. Excuse me. It's not a debatable issue. So now I've ruled you out of order. You've challenged it. Do you have a second? I'll you second it for the board to decide. Okay. Then the board will decide. All in favor of Mary Louise's challenge. That means if you agree with her, raise your hand. I have discussion. It's a non-debatable motion. It, it's mo it's just it's that's the way it is. I mean, if okay, we're going to operate, fine. No, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I get it. Fine. All right. All against. Abstain. I'm abstaining from the whole thing. Okay. We have to operate. So where's your transparency? Excuse me. Though? My transparency is right there, which I just said. We have to operate under some kind of order. We, what we've done in the, in the prior year is got into a lot of shouting matches, and we're not going to do that. We're going to have order on the board. That is something that had been discussed, and that I'll give you the reason why I ruled it out of order. It's been discussed. There are contracts that have been signed that are legal. It has been looked at by outside counsel. Outside counsel has given us advice on it as a board that it's legal, that it stays as it is. That's why I ruled that way, and it's, it's finished. I want to follow up and say to you. Not on that issue. And say to you, generically, that I was deprived in my prior term excuse me i'm ruling you out of order again relevant information excuse me which continued into this term i have served this community yes since you have 1978 yes, you have. and you have to have and order in order to run a meeting muzzled 
you're not being muzzled. And I am tired of members of this board, four members of this board in 2014, and now two members of the board who continue to try to cause uh, to All right. In a minute, I'm going to. In a minute, I'm going to recess the meeting. You've been ruled out of order. You're continuing to what talk. What are you afraid of? I'm not afraid of what anything. What are you afraid of? The board, the majority of the board, has made a decision, and that's in the decision stands. And I'm not afraid of anything. If you if you have to realize that public employees, as public uh, public elected officials like ourselves, refuse. To address situations Mary Louise, that, just are, that are damaging to this The community. situation has been addressed and addressed. No, it and hasn't been addressed it has because addressed. I have spent part of my last two terms, unfortunately, partly blindfolded because other elected officials would not share relevant information with me. Relevant information with me. They're, 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 all the information on all of no, the contracts. No. All right. Um, it's, you ruled out of order and it's finished. We're I'd moving like on. Anybody ask, else have any old I'd business? I'd like to ask Selectman Barnes if she has been. I have old business. I have old business. Okay, go ahead. It's my turn, right? Yep. Old business. Before the election, I made a public statement. It made some people upset. One of the things I said in that public statement that I hope was the majority of the next board was that we were not going to grind axes because grinding axes has gotten nowhere for the taxpayer. This town is facing a crisis. And like I stated at the beginning of this meeting, everyone in this room and that has been in this room tonight is the good guy. And decisions have been made and that is the way it is. And in order to sustain this town and what we're gonna be coming up against, Grinding axes, any axes, will never get us anywhere and has never gotten us anywhere. We are needed to take care of our taxpayers right now. The past is the past, the present is the present, and right now we need to start thinking about the future. That's all I have to say. Are there anybody else under old business? Yes. What, it's something new? Failure to inform fellow members of your board okay may, may i just stop for one second if you have if you have a complaint to file against the board I, I i advise that you go to somebody and file a complaint against the board if, the, if you feel something has been withheld from you illegally or anything has been done illegally you need to do that we're not going to sit here and discuss it tonight new business anybody in the new business, new business. oh chuck i i was Curious if the town is going to do anything about um, the, the taxpayers if they're that are when their tax bills come if they're not able to make oh. the tax bill. Do we have anything about maybe giving them a little bit of uh, time without being charged interest? Um, I don't know if there's something we can do for that. Well, the statute works automatically, but at the time the board is to take property for non-payment of taxes, you may waive the interest. So you have that latitude because you are the governing authority so of the town. What is the date? It's three it's years in the day from the date no, the taxes. When do they paid. get they uh, have to stop paying interest on uh, Oh, thirty days after the tax bill is issued. And can we can we not extend that to maybe ninety days? No, because it's a statutory thing. Okay. It's a state law, so we have interest? to do it. You can affect it on the other end. All right. Hmm. Could we change the interest? No, we can't do that either. That's statutory as well. Could we ask our senators and, and legislatures if they could do this? Yes, in fact, they just did change the interest. It was 18%, I believe it's now 12 You know, it's interesting. Uh, I was watching Governor Cuomo in New York, and he was saying, you know, talking about just the various thing about taxes and stuff and how he'd love to give a huge break. Oh, yeah. But he said on the other end, they need the money desperately. <laughs> To run, I mean, we need the money to run this. I mean, but I agree with you 100%. We got to look at it. We got to figure out some way to help people. It's, it's going to be tough for a lot of it's people to tough. make those deadlines. So, I mean, I'm not well, saying they not don't have to, to charge them the taxes. They don't have to pay it. I can tell you truthfully that my research in this town has shown me that uh, in the 12 years, 13 years I've been here, you've taken one piece of property. 
and that piece of property was abandoned, uh -huh. okay? And, and actually the person that was the, the successful heir under the deed received a large volume of money because the town sold it and it went to him. Hmm. So when, when it comes time for the reckoning, so to speak, this board has always looked at the, uh, the outside to see what's going on, to see what the problems were with the individual that's involved in a private sense, and they have never taken a piece of property. They've abated the taxes instead. And I'm not talking about taking the property. That's three no, years no. down the road. Yeah. I'm talking about a 12% interest charge. It's, it's like what they charge, they charge credit cards that. I mean, if you're telling me we're borrowing at 2.5%, uh, that's a lot of money for some of these people that have that are struggling to pay their taxes. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying give them the, the uh, they still have to pay their taxes, but some of them might need a little extra time. And they've got three years in a day. And at the end of that period of time, if, if the interest has been accrued yeah. and they can't pay their taxes, you have the right to abate it, including the interest. Do we have a right to abate it at any time? Mm. Technically, you have the right to abate taxes at any time. The problem is going to come as to how you account for it with the state. Mm. You, may, you may find yourself in a position where any taxpayer can then sue you for doing it. So what you need to do is you need to find the person in jeopardy. And the only way you can do that is if it comes down to taking the property and you don't want it and no, the town doesn't want people's property because it's a problem for everybody. You have to support the person you so, take the so property from. So talking to our reps and our senator, yeah. they can change it and conquer it, hopefully. Only if they change the law so you don't have the right to take the property. Or the, uh, or the, gov the governor could also do it. The governor can take emergency order. Uh, under an emergency order, the governor can take anything he wants. It just it forbids us from foreclosing on property or taking the property until the emergency order is ended. However, once it's ended, the statute takes over and you're required to take the property or abate. Yeah. So if people don't want to pay the taxes, they pay the interest in the taxes and they're trying to pay the taxes, you have the right to abate that. Okay. okay. And under new business, we have the twenty twenty sewer abatement. Right. The red, the uh, the total dollar value of that is one hundred and four thousand four hundred and thirty seven dollars. That represents the tax computation for everybody who does not have sewer service in the town. So that would be abated off of their bills. They would receive a check back for that. So do we vote on that? Yes, sir. You have to vote on that. I'll make a motion that we accept the twenty twenty. All in favor. I'll abstain because I'm one of those receivers. <laughs> you know, all right. Uh, it has to do with you live, not where you live, not what you pay. Concord Housing uh, Appeal, and I think, Virginia, you brought that up. So I did, and I'd like to bring it up because, as you know, we just got our new 2019-20 uh, edition of the planning yeah. and land use regulations. Oh, yeah. And I know that I brought this up a few times. This does not help make me happy that this has happened but it's there and we have to deal with it so it's very concerning to me I've talked to people statewide who are very concerned with it as well and I just hope that our planning I think personally the town of Hampton does an excellent job working with anyone that comes in for variances mm -hmm. developments things like that and I just hope that going forward that continues because we definitely need to solve these problems at the local level because Concord does not have a clue what is good for us in Hampton and they are not locally elected. And a couple things I don't like about this board is one, that it's appointed for a terms of five years. Our elected boards at the local level are only appointed for three years. Yeah. Another thing is that it shall be the duty of the board and shall have the power and authority to hear and affirm, reverse or modify, modify in whole or part appeals of final decisions of municipal boards. Again, those are municipally, uh, municipal elected boards at the local level. And this is now, right now the way it works is if you want to appeal, you have to go to the court. Well, this is allowing you to go to, and I don't care who they are, they're appointed and they're bureaucrats in Concord. And the other thing that stuck out is, uh, this is on page 514, it's okay. chapter 679, Housing Appeals Board. Yeah. It's supposed to become effective July 1st, 2020. Okay, thank you. In exercising its authority under this chapter, the board shall have the power to award all remedies available to the superior courts in similar cases, including permission to develop the proposed housing. Okay. 
So this makes me nervous, and it also makes me nervous with what we have going on right now because I think one of the reasons why we're lucky in our community is we do not have two large developments. Like, let's say you go, you know, you go to the planning board or you go to the zoning board, you get your variances, and you go to the planning board, and they're like, you know what, we're going to say 60 units even though maybe he wants 100. Mm. But the planning board and the, lo the zoning board have decided, you know, 60 units is really what's right for the town. Well, now those decisions can literally be overturned uh. by people in Concord. And that makes me very uncomfortable because more condensed housing is going to lead to more problems. Not that we definitely need more affordable housing around here. I'm not saying that, but I think that our boards and I think throughout the state, the locally elected boards can decide what is best for their communities. Yeah. And I feel like this is a huge overreach by Concord, and I appreciate you, Jim, for putting it on the agenda tonight. Good, so okay. thank you. Anybody else want to talk about that? No, I think she's uh, spot on on most of it, so. Okay, the other thing is, I the last thing I put on there, town manager and deputy town manager 2020 goals. I think one time when we were talking with somebody, and they were talking about evaluations and stuff, and we said we didn't have any goals, and the, and the attorney said to us, shame on you, that we should have goals, and, the, and, the, and we should be evaluating the manager and the town manager on those goals. So if people can think about the goals, and then what we can do is at a, a, a future meeting, we can present those to, you know, talk about them and narrow them down and, and present a, a series of goals that we want them to achieve this year. Sounds good. Anybody else? Mr. Welch has set goals all along the way since 2007. Okay, uh, anything else? Any closing comments? I have one last yep. thing about, I got a couple questions about, usually we're going to be coming into the entertainment license renewals. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it possible for this board to maybe delay that or? For what? Maybe for the wording could be. Could give them the approvals upon. Um, well, I mean, I think it's a question of maybe they don't. They're not. They're not going to be able to do any entertaining. That's Ooh. not allowed right now. Ooh. For all the businesses that get oh, entertainment they're licenses. Oh, yeah, right. they're closed okay. for takeout only. So. Well, I think we should be able to give them the license for when this this crisis is over, over. Yeah. because we don't want to be slanting. We don't want to be told June fifteenth everything's good, right. and then we're slammed with with right. twenty five mm -hmm. restaurants and. But usually they do. Is it April first? Uh, the way the ordinance is written and the way the town meeting passed it, uh, they have to have their application in here by March thirty first. Uh -huh. so if they do not, it's not a renewal. You have to go back to start all over again. My suggestion is that because of the current crisis, and because of the governor's executive order that you, you, you move that date forward to the conclusion of the executive order when these businesses can reopen, because otherwise they have no need to apply. Yeah. I'll second our motion. All right, thanks. <laughs> All in favor? Opposed? Very good. Close it. Anybody else? Stay safe. Motion to adjourn at 2018. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Thank you, Terminal 22. So the next meeting will be two weeks from tonight. Yeah. Yes, ma'am.